The young man who proclaimed the gospel this, this morning is Father Luke that we've been waiting for the last couple of weeks. I'll let Father, my homily is pretty short, I think, and we'll let Father Luke then just introduce himself after the homily. Over the last nine weeks, we've been celebrating the truth, the reality, the fact that God is alive and his presence is here in our church, in our parish. We have the Easter resurrection. God is alive. He truly is, and he appeared. Then you have Pentecost, the coming of the Holy Spirit. Again, the Father and Son are involved in that as the Holy Spirit comes upon us. And then we had, last weekend, Trinity Sunday. Again, when you look at the Old Testament anew, how God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they have working, they are present, they are alive for our eternal good. They love us, that's why they created us. They really, truly do love us and can never do anything that goes against love. And then as you, you look at this, today we celebrate the feast of Corpus Christi, the body, blood, soul, divinity of Jesus Christ, our Savior. The Eucharist is here to nourish us, certainly. Take and eat, as Jesus says. It's also here for us to adore. It's also here for us to talk with and pray with. And the Lord speaks to us also. And it also is a great comfort to the sick and the dying. As we bring, the Lord allows us to be these ministers, as we bring the living presence of Christ to those who are hurting. All the sacraments, and you know this, this is nothing new, all the sacraments bring Christ to us in some way. Be it baptism, be it confession, uh, be it marriage, be it priesthood, be it the anointing of the sick, be it confirmation. But the Eucharist, this is just a simple point this, this morning, the Eucharist is the, the, the foundation, the summit, the anchor of all the other sacraments. And that, again, it's a mystery, but it's a truth. Today, Father Luke proclaimed from the Gospel of St. Mark. When you talk about the Eucharist, John chapter 6 is a vital one. So I'm going to focus on John chapter 6. Similar, but a little different. You got a bunch of people around Jesus. You know this story. You have a bunch of people around Jesus. And then Jesus says to them all, you will eat my flesh and you will drink my blood. And what did most of the people do? They said, this guy's nuts. This is Jesus we're talking about, the Son of God. And they had the nerve to say, this guy's nuts, whatever he's saying. And most walked away. But then you had Peter and the others, the other who's soon to be apostles, and Peter spoke up for them and said, Lord, get in the comment, you're going to eat my, eat my flesh, drink my blood. And Peter steps up and says, Lord, we have no idea what you're talking about. And it makes no sense for anyone to follow you, except for one thing. And Peter basically says, I have come to believe in you. I have come to trust you. And even though my little human mind cannot understand what you mean by eat my flesh and drink my blood, I believe you because you have shown me by our relationship that you are truthful. And sometimes with the Eucharist, it's the element of faith and trust in God and trust in our relationship with Jesus that really tells us how blessed we are that this is all true. A simple thought, I think I've used this before, but I'm not sure. At every Mass I celebrate over the past years, when the consecrated host is raised, I will always ask, I'm talking to Jesus, as he's, as he's standing up here, I'm talking to Jesus and say, Lord, allow your love to come upon me. And then I will say to myself, you can't really hear me, I normally just whisper it to myself and to God, God right here, and also bless, and I got a whole bunch of people, this person, this person, this person, this person, this person, this person, and this person, and then for all who have asked me to pray for them. And I consciously ask God the rays of his love to go out to all those people. And I think of those people just standing there welcoming the rays of God's love. 
So if I'm holding the host a little bit longer than usual, it means my list has gotten longer. But again, it's just a, it's a great little way to allow the Eucharist, as, the, as his host is raised, to allow Jesus to bless those we care about, along with ourselves. And the same thing when the, when the precious blood is raised, which is the body and blood of Christ, when the chalice is raised up, I do the same thing. Lord, allow a drop of your blood, a drop of your love, to come upon me that I can love better. And again, Lord, for so-and-so, 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 and so-and-so, I'm thinking of them right now as I say that, I ask a drop of your blood to come upon their heart that they truly may love also. Try that today as the Mass continues as Jesus is raised. There's a little statement in ancient prayer that when the body and blood of Christ is raised up here at Mass, a simple prayer we say, my Lord and my God. My Lord and my God. But the prayer which I think is even more important, God, I believe, and we do, but help me in my unbelief, which is always needed.